Hey cats and kittens, it's Ed, discount next percent bud here. Today I have for you one of my discussion pieces, or you could call it a rant, on the Alpha Fly next percent nature. 295 earth credits? You must be joking, Nike. Thanks for joining here on the channel, guys. Always appreciated. You're always welcome here. And remember that it's okay to not feel okay about stuff sometimes. If you're feeling down, remember there's people there that can listen to you, they can help you and they can talk about things with you. Don't sit in silence. Remember you're worth it. Every day you get up, you're worth it. Always remember that. So talking about the Alpha Fly Next Percent Nature Edition. So I've just unveiled this on the Nike website and launched it in fact, just out of the blue. I thought it was going to be a few weeks yet, but they seem to have dropped it, maybe in response to Saucony releasing that special Pro Plus endorphin thing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus does sound like a, a caffeine related supplement. So we've got another version of the Alpha Fly here, almost a second design or a sequel, I suppose. Nike do that quite often, don't they? Same old midsole and outsole and then a new upper. That's pretty much what we have here, sort of. Certainly a brand new upper. Something we haven't seen since some prototype next percent shoes, or at least prototype Zoom X shoes from a few years back. I remember they did a 3D printed Kipchoge special. The fly print technology made using a 3D printing technique apparently lightens the shoes somewhat as does the recycled Zoomex midsole. Crushed up off cuts of Zoomex there guys, maybe from some old Vaporfly 4% or some peg turbos. Looks like they've just autoclaved it together, maybe saving a small bit of weight by filling it with nothing. I mean, I've got to applaud the eco-friendly attitudes here. Recycling of materials, that's a a great thing. Trying to save the planet, but certainly Nike aren't saving the old wallet. Aside from the upper, which I thought was really great on the original Alpha Fly, the idea of an unstandardized midsole underfoot that's just made up of scraps of foam really doesn't enthrall me. It really isn't exciting. Is the 3D printing technology used here really a reason to be able to charge that much more for the shoe? Is it more expensive to utilize and put into practice than other upper materials that have been used in the past? Let's not forget here guys that that midsole material features two sections that are kind of stitched together. There's an upper and lower portion in the heel through to the midfoot along with another piece in the toe. Is it just me that wonders if the more pellet-like nature of the midsole foam here will separate over time? I mean, look at the Peg Turbo. They must have got loads of those sent back. I mean, mine were okay. Well, one of them started to do it at the end. I mean, the upper aesthetically looks very interesting, doesn't it? And stupendously light too. You can almost see through certain parts of the side panels, but the section marked fly print there clearly isn't. It's Flyknit or Atomknit or whatever was on the original Alpha Fly, right? I think that other bit just seems more like Flyknit to me. The collar and the central tongue section appear to be the same as the standard model. And just checking out the rubber here and the outsole. Why did they choose these pictures? You can see it's really ill-fitting there and barely stuck on towards the end of the heel. The pinwheel swoosh on the medial side of the shoe as well really isn't my cup of tea. But that's just aesthetic stuff. It just looks a bit weird. It looks a bit tacky to me. Some of you out there may love that. That might be the best bit of the shoe. And that's cool. We'll just agree to disagree on that one. It's not going to affect performance, is it? I think my issue here is with the price tag. How can you justify charging another 26 Earth credits on top of an already ridiculous price? I mean, this is making the Alpha Fly Next Percent Nature Edition 70 Earth credits more than the Adidas Prime X. Yes, Adidas's top of the range training running shoe circus thing. 220 quid for that, it's, I'm not going there. And let's not forget that the Alpha Fly was a shoe that was released originally back in 2020. The Prime X is certainly a shoe that's been released very recently, and as such, it just feels like it's perhaps worth its retail price a little more, maybe. At the moment, you can find stores trying to sell off pairs of the Alpha Fly for a, almost as low as 160 Earth credits. If you're after certain sizes, you can get an incredible deal. 
almost half the price of this nature version. I have to say that I love the fact the upper is made from recycled bottles, but so are my 50 pound Adidas SL20s. 70% of the midsole is recycled, probably from old peg turbos and stuff. 50% of the carbon plate is apparently from recycled materials as well. But at this price, Nike, you just must be kidding. Is this like a bad joke or something? I mean, on Nike's website at the moment, you can find the Gakuso Next Percent for £135 discounted. I mean, you could buy two pairs and still have some change left over to buy yourself some Morton gels. Don't get me wrong, the AlphaFly and its AirPods work fantastically well for me. But it's simply an insane price at just shy of £300 for a shoe that is Kipchoge the person who was involved in the design even going to wear again. Let's not forget he wore the next percent too at the Olympic marathon. Will it be a tad lighter? Do I care? The upper less absorbent? Really? Is it going to make that much difference for £295? I expect incredible quality for that amount of money and just these images just don't show that to me. Adidas and Puma just seem far away better in terms of quality certainly of their releases in 2021. Nike just seems to think they can push out any shoe at the moment and people will go crazy for it and buy it, as long as you've got some percent on it or something. No. Will this sell out? I mean, I, I hope it doesn't. Not from the ecological side of it. I mean, they've made the shoes now, so it would be good if people use them, I suppose, but it's simply not worth it. The marketing's there, isn't it? Eco-friendly vibes flowers in the pictures you know nike maybe you can plant the shoe in the ground at the end and it will come up roses but i just find there's very little that breaks this away from the existing alpha fly models they cost 259 to 269 earth credits i mean if you want to experience those airpods the stack of foam then find yourself a discounted model. Just hope those AirPods don't burst when you take them out on your initial run. Imagine that, guys, you spent £295. Take them out for an initial run, you step on a shard of glass, maybe you hit a particularly robust rock, or, heavens forbid, a nail. What are you going to do then? You've got a £295 clog. So is this quick release a response to Socony's Endorphin Pro Plus? I watched that event. It was interesting. Not sure what was going on with the lights there. It was a bit like a New Year's Eve party when the DJs only turned up with acid house music. Nike have done the same thing recently after Adidas and Puma releases. It's almost like a knee-jerk reaction, like, get the shoe out quick, we need to be in the public eye, we must be at the top. Either way, the Earth credits are staying firmly in my wallet. Not happening this time. £295 is quite frankly scandalous. It's got to be a joke, right? A really bad one. What are your thoughts and comments on this shoe, guys? I know it's going to generate some serious discussion. It could get tasty. Thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. Danke schön. A quick musical interlude for you now. One of my favourite tracks about trying to save the planet and to be a bit more ecologically minded is from Neil Young entitled Mother Earth. This one was on his album Ragged Glory, which I think was early 90s. It features Crazy Horse, although this track is pretty much just Neil Young and vocals with a few harmonies from the band. The distortion on his electric guitar in this track is just wonderful. It's grainy, fuzzy. There's almost like an octave type sound across the whole guitar, and he really just uses it as this kind of seething mass of electricity. The vocal is sincere, the lyrics sincere, and you could see even back then that there was a movement there, There's people trying to do the right thing, I suppose, and that's becoming more and more apparent that we need to do that right now. The rest of the album's great as well. If you've never heard Ragged Glory, it's just down and dirty, no messing around. Country Home, Over and Over, and Mansion on the Hill are my favourites. Long tracks, fantastic Neil Young solos. What more do you want? Go and check it out, guys. Ragged Glory by Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Right, it's time to get my editing hat on. Oh, I'm already wearing it. Thanks for stopping by, guys. It's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. And it really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.